We yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask our Kids Life staff to come on into the aisles and help our kiddos get down here to the front, please. Short ones on the stairs and tall ones down on the floor. And while they're coming, I'm just going to quickly draw your attention to your bulletin insert today. That's actually the notes from the parenting class that took place earlier this morning. Uh, if you're not going to the parenting class, if you're a parent, you should go. There's going to be some great content next week about how to train your kids with devotions and so forth. So plan on being there. But I'm going to be referring to some of the content in the insert today. How are you guys doing today? Good. Okay, I have a pre-selected volunteer that I'm going to bring up here who happens to be related to me today because I forgot to select my volunteer earlier. Everybody say hi to Faith. All right. Well, I have a whole bunch of scriptures to throw out at you today. I got my Gatlin gun, so take cover. I'm going to start off with Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to put it up on the screen. This is one of my favorite parts of the Bible, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And uh, moving on to the next verse, these commands that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Next Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. We'll stop there for now. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> I didn't even see that. That's why she's here. This is a command of God about how to train up our children, right? Yes. Okay, we're going to see what this might look like. Faith, let us imagine that you are a mommy in the not- well, in the distant, very distant future. How about that? So this is God's command. You're supposed to raise up a godly, a godly kid, right? Okay? There's another scripture here uh, that simply says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is from, uh, I think that's the Proverbs one you've got there. So let's say that you have here all the building blocks for building a godly kid, Okay? Raising up a godly kid. So this is what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you this job. I want you to build out of these blocks something that looks like a godly person. Okay, you ready? So get down and do whatever you need to do. Ready, go. Okay. So we're here. We're trying to build a godly kid. And oh, hold on, Faith, just a minute. Before you do that, take a break because we got to go to soccer practice. Come here. Stand up. All right. Kick the ball to me. That's right. Now here, stop it. There you go. Very good. Soccer practice. Hey, you need to be building this kid, by the way. Did you know that? Yeah, get on that. Okay. So you're supposed to be building a godly kid. Oh, wait a minute, Faith. We got football practice. Stand up. Ready? Come here. It's football practice. There you go. Nice. Give her a hand. A girl. Good. You throw like a girl, but we'll work on that. Okay. What are you doing? You're supposed to be building a godly kid. Don't you know? Okay, well, you tell me. Get on it. So we're supposed to be doing this, parents, right? We're so, oh, by the way, wouldn't you like to come and learn how to play a musical instrument? Come here. <laughs> I'll bet you she can teach you how to play this clarinet. What do you think? Saxophone. It's a saxophone. See, we need more lessons. <laughs> we need more lessons than I thought. Okay. All right, so that's lesson one. You need to get back and do what we told you to do. I don't know why you're not doing this. Okay, so how are you coming, by the way? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what? There's a TV show on that we want to watch. So here, just have a seat there. There we go. All right, so here, wait, okay. By the way, TV's over. Okay, now what? Time's up. Let me see your godly, your, your person. Is that the best you can do? You lost an arm. Huh? How come, how come you didn't get this done? You didn't let me. I didn't let you. What do you mean I didn't let you? You kept on making me do work. I made you do other things? You mean you didn't have enough time? She didn't have enough time to build a godly kid. Ready? Here it comes. Take cover. God has commanded us, parents, to raise godly kids. But many of us, thank you. We're done with you, Faith. Give her a hand. He's commanded us to raise godly kids, but many of us are too busy 
to spend the time required to build godly kids. We are not home enough. In your, uh, in your bulletins, there's an insert with a little pie chart about what a 24-hour day looks like for many families. Your day may look like this. It may not. But there, there are blanks of that available out at the children's booth so you can fill in what your day looks like. But the upshot of it is this. In a 24-hour day, you maybe spend 30 minutes actually interacting with your kids. I'm not talking about being under the same roof, watching TV. I'm talking about playing with listening to, talking with your kids, interacting, Deuteronomy 6 stuff. And we are sending our kids off to events that are taking away from our parenting time. We as adults are going off to events that are taking away from our parenting time. Now hear me well, because you're going to walk out and you're going to say, Mike is anti all this stuff. No. I'm not against soccer, I'm not against sports, I'm not against lessons or any of the things that we do. What I'm saying is this. We as a society have accepted a schedule that is too busy to allow us to obey God's commands to raise up godly kids. Amen. Yes. And we have to set priorities. We can't do all of these things that the world says we should do. Some of, these, some of these parents think you're crazy if your kids aren't in soccer, like you're, you're cheating your kids. So what? If I want to be a parent and I want to raise my kids, I don't care if they're in soccer. Let me ask you kids something. And I'm picking on soccer because it's the most popular one. Again, not anti-soccer. I'm against parents giving away their time with their kids that they don't have to give away. Kids, by a show of hands, how many of you would like to have more time playing with, talking to, and listening to your parents? By a show of hands, if you would like more time. Pay attention, parents. Pay attention. Kids, put your hands down. Here's another one. How many of you are in soccer or some other thing, music lessons, dance lessons, whatever it might be? How many of you, if it meant you could spend more time playing with, talking to, and just being with your mom and dad, how many of you would give it up? Raise your hands if you would give it up to be with mom and dad more. Pay attention, parents. Pay attention. These things are not bad. Soccer's not bad. Football's not bad. Music lessons aren't bad. All the stuff that we do that takes us apart isn't bad until it takes away from what we are supposed to be doing. These kids want to be with you, parents. They want to be with you. We need to want to be with them. Amen. Churches don't raise godly kids, folks. Godly parents raise godly kids. And that's what we need. So, yeah, that's right. Let's get our next scripture up here. Here's the thing. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. If we're never with our kids, you think they're going to get frustrated? If we're wiped out, are we going to be patient with our kids? Are we going to be an example of godliness? Next scripture. Anyone who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it does what? We're supposed to raise up godly kids. If we're not doing it, what are we doing? If we're not taking the time required to do the job, what are we doing? Finally, this last scripture. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Oh, that's harsh. Our kids need our time. They need us. All these other things are nice. Music lessons, sports, all these things that take us away. They're nice, but our kids need us. And if we don't provide our kids with ourselves, our time, our attention, our love. If that's not our heart's desire with our children, we are denying the faith and worse than the unbeliever. That's what it says. I didn't say it. It's not my fault. Don't get mad at me. We need to have hearts that long to be with our children and to obey God's commands. And I pray that each one today will look at our schedules. Those of us who are parents, those of us who are grandparents, those of us who might become parents, that will look at our schedules and not let a worldly standard dictate the way we set our schedules with our kids. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's pray. 
Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have shown us how to obey your commands. You have shown us what we are to do. And I thank you for trusting these beautiful children to us. Lord, they're your kids. They're really yours. And, uh, and you've said in scripture that if we cause them to sin, it's better to have a millstone hung around our neck and be drowned. You take it seriously, Lord. I thank you that you do. Help me, help us as parents to take this as seriously as we are supposed to and to be the godly parents that we're supposed to be, Lord. Help us to reject the world's schedule for our lives and to embrace your schedule for our lives and help us to love these kids and nurture them and cultivate them and raise them up to love you the way we're supposed to. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, kids. You did a great job. Again, that pie chart, if you want to see what your schedule looks like, pick one up at the children's booth. Okay, let's have all of our kids make their exit out the aisle there. And in